On December 18, 1997, the comedy world was stunned by the sudden loss of Chris Farley. At just 33, a vibrant comedic talent, beloved by millions, was tragically extinguished. Farley's death marked not only the loss of a life, but the end of a unique and powerful force in entertainment. Chris Farley's story begins in the heart of the Midwest, in Madison, Wisconsin. Born on February 15, 1964, into a large Irish Catholic family, Farley was one of five siblings. His upbringing in this bustling, loving household laid the foundation for his future in comedy. Farley's father, Thomas Farley Sr., owned an oil company, and his mother, Mary Ann, was a homemaker. The warmth and humor that permeated their home played a significant role in shaping Farley's personality. From an early age, Farley exhibited a natural flair for making people laugh. He attended Catholic schools, where he was known more for his class clown antics than his academic achievements. Farley's early life in Madison was not just about humor. It was also where he first encountered the pressures of fitting in and the desire to be liked, themes that would recur throughout his life. After high school, Farley attended Marquette University in Milwaukee, where he studied communications and theater. Here, he began to seriously consider a career in comedy. His time at Marquette was pivotal. It was where he started to understand the power of laughter and the joy of entertaining others. However, it was also during these college years that Farley's struggles with alcohol began, hinting at the challenges that would later escalate in his life. Post-college, Farley moved to Chicago, drawn by the city's vibrant comedy scene. He joined the Arc Improv Theater and then moved on to the renowned Second City Theater. At Second City, Farley's talent truly began to shine. His exuberant, larger-than-life persona, combined with an innate sense of timing and physical comedy, quickly made him a standout performer. He was not just funny, he was a force of nature on stage, drawing audiences into his whirlwind of energy and laughter. Farley's big break came in 1990 when he was cast in Saturday Night Live. Joining SNL was a dream come true for Farley, and he quickly became one of the show's brightest stars. His characters, like the motivational speaker Matt Foley and the Chippendales dancer, were instant hits. Farley's physical comedy, fearless performances, and ability to bring characters to life with a unique blend of intensity and vulnerability made him a fan favorite. As his fame grew, Farley transitioned to the big screen with films like Tommy Boy and Black Sheep. These movies showcased his ability to carry a film as the lead actor, blending slapstick humor with a kind of poignant, childlike innocence. Tommy Boy, in particular, became a cult classic, further cementing Farley's status as a comedy star. The pressures of fame exacerbated Farley's personal struggles. He found himself in a world where excess was often the norm, and his addictive personality led him down a path of self-destruction. Farley's friends and colleagues often recounted his off-screen vulnerability and his constant battle with addiction. Despite multiple stints in rehab, the grip of substance abuse remained a constant challenge. In the mid-90s, the life of Chris Farley, a beacon of comedy and joy, began to dim under the shadow of personal and professional turmoil. His vibrant performances, once the highlight of any show, were increasingly marred by his visibly deteriorating health. The relentless demands of the entertainment industry, combined with Farley's struggles to cope with stress and public scrutiny, led to a distressing decline in his physical and mental well-being. His battle with addiction, once a private struggle, became painfully evident, with his public appearances often reflecting a man wrestling with deep-seated turmoil. As Farley's life progressed, the signs of his internal battle became more pronounced. His reliance on drugs and alcohol, once whispered about in industry circles, became a matter of public concern. Those close to him watched with a mix of fear and helplessness as Farley spiraled downwards. His life had become a storm of fame, pressure, and personal demons, a tempest that he seemed increasingly powerless to quell. The tragic end came on December 18, 1997, Farley was found dead in his apartment in the iconic John Hancock Center in Chicago, a city that had been a significant part of his rise to fame. The night before his death, Farley had been out, indulging in the excesses that had become a hallmark of his troubled final years. The following morning, a scene of heartbreak unfolded when his younger brother, John, discovered his lifeless body. 
The immediate surroundings bore silent witness to a night of excess and a life plagued by addiction. The autopsy report confirmed the sad truth that many had feared. Farley had succumbed to an overdose from a lethal combination of cocaine and morphine known in the drug world as a speedball. This toxic mix had proven too much for his body to handle. The toxicology report laid bare the stark reality of Farley's final hours, a period characterized by an overwhelming consumption of drugs. It was a poignant and painful end to a life that had once been filled with laughter and promise. Farley's death sent shockwaves through the entertainment world and beyond. It was not just the loss of a talented comedian. It was a stark reminder of the often hidden struggles faced by those in the public eye. His passing highlighted the destructive impact of fame and addiction, a lethal combination that has claimed too many lives in the world of show business. Farley's style of comedy was a unique blend of physical slapstick and heartwarming vulnerability. He idolized figures like John Belushi and John Candy, and like them, Farley had a way of filling the screen with his larger-than-life presence. His characters, often portrayed as lovable and bumbling, resonated deeply with audiences. This connection was rooted in Farley's ability to bring a sense of vulnerability and relatability to his roles, making his humor not just funny but also deeply human. His tenure on Saturday Night Live is particularly memorable. Characters like Matt Foley, the over-the-top motivational speaker, became cultural touchstones. Farley's commitment to his roles was total. He was known for throwing himself physically and emotionally into his performances, leaving an indelible mark on his audience and peers. Adam Sandler, a close friend and colleague from SNL, once remarked, You can't be around Farley and not have fun. He was a force of nature. Beyond his own work, Farley's influence on the world of comedy is significant. He inspired a generation of comedians who saw in him a perfect blend of physical comedy and genuine, heartfelt humor. His approach to comedy, which seamlessly combined robust physicality with a sense of innocence and vulnerability, set a new bar in the genre. Celebrities and friends often spoke of Farley with a mix of admiration and sadness. David Spade, who co-starred with Farley in several films, reflected on his talent and the tragedy of his loss, saying, Chris was fearless. He had this incredible energy that just drew you in. We all knew he was battling his demons, but it never took away from the incredible person he was. Chris Rock, another SNL alum, shared his thoughts on Farley's impact. Chris was the funniest guy I ever knew. He could make anything funny. It wasn't just his talent, it was his heart that made him special. Farley's life, marked by incredible highs and tragic lows, serves as a powerful reminder of the complexities and pressures of life in the public eye. We invite you to share your thoughts and memories of Chris Farley in the comments below. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.